In the previous videos, we looked at electrochemical cells with reactive metal electrodes and solutions containing their cations. However, some electrochemical cells have half reactions involving gases. We'll look at one of those here. We're given the diagram for an electrochemical cell. The left beaker has a platinum electrode, which is surrounded by hydrogen gas and dipped into a solution of one molar hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid contains aqueous hydrogen ions and chloride ions. The beaker on the right has a tin electrode immersed in a solution of one molar tin 2 nitrate, which contains aqueous SN2 plus ions and nitrate ions. Looking back at the half cell on the left, it's important to know that platinum is an inert metal. The platinum electrode does not react in this cell. It only provides a surface upon which the half reaction can take place. Inert metals like platinum are often used in half cells where gases are involved. Gases and aqueous ions need a solid surface to react with each other on. This particular half cell is very important. It is called the standard half cell. The reactive species in the standard half cell are H2 gas and aqueous H plus ions. The chloride ions, Cl minus, are spectators in this particular half cell. The half reaction for the standard half cell is the shaded half reaction right in the middle of the reduction table. Here it is enlarged. This half cell is assigned a reduction potential of zero volts under standard conditions. The little knot on the E naught means standard conditions. At standard conditions, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. The pressure is one atmosphere, or 101.3 kilopascals, and the concentration of H plus is one molar. The double arrow here reminds us that this half reaction can occur either as a reduction and proceed to the right, or as an oxidation and proceed to the left. The direction it goes depends on what other half cell it is connected to. Now that we know the half cell on the left is the standard half cell, we'll look at the overall cell and go through a series of questions. The A part of the question asked us to write the half reaction at the anode along with its E naught value. We find the half reactions on the reduction table. The higher half reaction on the table, the hydrogen half cell, will act as the cathode, and the lower one, the tin half cell, will act as the anode. Because the tin half reaction is the anode, oxidation is taking place. So the equation must be reversed. So it's written as SN solid gives SN2 plus plus two electrons. Also, because the equation was reversed, the sign on the E naught must be switched. So the E naught for this half reaction is positive 0.14 volts. This is the oxidation potential of tin metal. The B part of the question asks us to write the half reaction at the cathode along with its E naught value. The cathode half reaction is the hydrogen half cell. And the cathode half reaction is not reversed. So it's 2H plus plus two electrons gives H2 gas. And its E naught value is equal to zero volts. The C part of the question asks us to write the equation for the overall redox reaction along with its E naught value. To write the equation for the overall redox reaction, we add up the half reactions the way they are written. Electrons gained are equal to electrons lost, so we don't need to multiply any of the half reactions and we can cancel out electrons. On the left side, we have SN solid and 2H plus. And on the right side, we have SN2 plus and H2 gas. To find the overall E naught, we add up 
positive 0.14 and 0, giving us positive 0.14 volts. Remember the E0 value for an overall redox equation at standard conditions is called the standard cell potential. The D part of the question asks us to state the initial voltage of this cell. Remember the standard cell potential is the same as the initial voltage of a cell. So the initial voltage of this cell is positive 0.14 volts. We'll make a note of this up here by the voltmeter. The E part of this question asks which way electrons are traveling as this cell operates. The cell will operate if we replace the voltmeter with a light bulb. Remember that electrons always travel from the anode to the cathode through the wires. So they are traveling from the tin electrode toward the platinum electrode. The F part of this question asks us what will happen to the pH around the platinum electrode as this cell operates. To answer this question, we focus on the half reaction taking place on the platinum electrode. We see that H plus is on the left side of this half reaction, so H plus is being consumed as it is reduced to hydrogen gas. Remember from the acid base unit that pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So as H plus is used up, and the concentration of H plus or acidity decreases, the pH will gradually increase near the platinum electrode. The G part of this question asks what will happen to the mass of the platinum electrode as this cell operates. Remember the half reaction taking place on the platinum electrode is the reduction of H plus ions to hydrogen gas. The platinum electrode itself is inert. It doesn't undergo any reaction. It simply provides a solid surface for this reaction to take place on. So as the cell operates, the mass of the platinum electrode will not change in any way. To review, by using a cell diagram, the table of reduction potentials, and the principles we learned, we were able to answer a number of questions about this electrochemical cell.